This is a contentious one. And I remain neutral on this. How to renegotiate when you're buying or selling a property after you've already had a deal agreed. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is because I am getting people on a daily basis saying to me, I'm really worried, I've had an offer accepted, I don't want to buy it at the top of the market, should I pull out, should I renegotiate? And of course, I can't advise individually on those because it's such a personal matter and there are so many personal uh, factors affecting each one. So that's the, the reason for this video. And the advice I'm offering on how to renegotiate is mainly intended at first time buyers or any buyers in fact, um, but actually is the same for any seller that wants to renegotiate for whatever reason, if you're watching this video at a different time where house prices aren't falling. Um, and the first thing I'll say is this, this is the most, the single most important point to consider if you are thinking about renegotiating a property transaction when you've already got a sale or uh, agreed, a purchase or a sale agreed. Any attempt to renegotiate your transaction may result in the transaction falling apart and failing, okay? And if that is not a risk you're prepared to accept, do not try to renegotiate your transaction, okay? Because it's such an intensely personal thing and, you know, your decision to renegotiate might have a massive impact on the people on the other side of the transaction. And so there are not just financial considerations here, but actually human ones as well. Now that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it because you shouldn't be overpaying. If you are a buyer who's just paid and agreed to buy at the very top of the market, maybe you offered over asking price and got it accepted because you were the highest bit above asking price. And in the few weeks or months since that's happened, you think, hang on, the world has changed and I'm no longer comfortable doing that. Then, you know, you have a legitimate reason for considering renegotiating your purchase because perhaps you're now at risk of negative equity that when you agreed the offer or made your offer to buy the property and it was accepted, maybe at that point you didn't feel you were at risk, okay? So there's always one party that doesn't want to renegotiate, whichever side it might be. And I'm gonna offer my advice to both sides. But first and foremost, if you are a buyer, especially a first time buyer, is your reason for renegotiating, which is obviously financial, more important to you than actually getting into that home? If so, then that's the scenario where you should renegotiate, okay? In other words, if you now consider the risks of negative equity too great, given your mortgage loan to value, the size of your deposit, the price you're paying, and your future job prospects, and your future security in being able to maintain your mortgage payments, if that has changed, you might be in a position where you're saying, I cannot now proceed on this basis because the risks are too great, therefore I have to renegotiate. And if that results in the deal falling through, then so be it, then you should proceed with your renegotiation. All right. Um, I actually did, I once renegotiated on behalf of a friend who was buying in London uh, in the, uh, the 2007, 2008, when the prices were coming down then. That, the difference there was that, 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 because, sorry, yeah, that reminds me, there is a second consideration. If you've got a purchase agreed and your mortgage has been approved, your mortgage valuation survey has happened, they have approved the transaction price and have approved your mortgage offer based on those figures, then any attempt to renegotiate the price down will likely require your mortgage companies uh, uh, they'll need to know about it and they'll need to reconsider their offer. And in most cases, I think they're going to be happy to do that. Uh, but I don't know. I'm not an expert on mortgages and you would need to check perhaps with your mortgage broker before you renegotiate uh, to see if there is going to be any effect on your renegotiation on your mortgage. Because if your renegotiation is successful, let's say you negotiate a 5% or a 10% reduction in the price you previously agreed, does that 5% come off your deposit? Well, probably not, because your mortgage company is going to say, well, hang on, that increases our loan to value ratio, and that might be too high for us. So if you do successfully achieve a price reduction in your renegotiation, it's more than likely going to reduce the amount that you're borrowing. 
Um, it may, it, that depends on how much deposit you've got and how much your mortgage is. But if you are a first time buyer with a 90% or 95% especially mortgage, you are going to need to definitely uh, talk to your mortgage provider before renegotiating it down. Now, second scenario, if getting into this home is more important to, the, to you than financial savings, do not attempt a renegotiation, especially if you've got a mortgage survey done and you're now just waiting for exchange to happen, okay? Because you will kick yourself, potentially, if you lose that home that you wanted because the seller just pulls out and goes, you know what, I'm not sending it to that person anymore. And this is what happens in property. People make irrational decisions based on emotion and, well, just rage sometimes, okay? Uh, I've heard recently of a story, someone contacted me about, there was a buy-to-let landlord selling their property and it was a cash buyer and the cash buyer decided to renegotiate. They accepted the fact that the, 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 the seller might pull out uh, and that's what happened. They renegotiated down, the seller did drop their price, but they actually dropped their price so quickly and easily that the buyer said, I'm even more nervous now, I'm actually going to pull out and they decided not to buy at this point. And that seller has apparently decided to put their property back on the rental market and not sell at all. So... If the practical reasons, if for practical reasons, being in a home of your own is your priority and you have a deal agreed, then it's not a good idea to renegotiate, provided you're confident or you have accepted the risks of poten the potentials of negative equity. Okay, now, so number one, are you prepared to risk the deal falling through if you, rene if you renegotiate? Number two, have you checked with your mortgage provider or broker or lender what would happen if you did successfully renegotiate a reduction and would they be okay with that? Let's assume those two things are a yes, right? You're prepared to risk losing the deal and, you're, and, and you've had the okay from the mortgage company to, to, to negotiate a reduction. I, I imagine most of them would actually be happy with that. They're not going to need to revisit the property to do, to do a survey, are they? So it should be, it might be a straightforward process. Then how do you approach it? Number one, you need to pick your new figure. Whatever that figure might be and say, right, we had agreed X, we're now reducing our offer to X minus 5%, let's say. You have to think through, what happens if the seller goes, yep, fine, 5%, no problem, let's go ahead. Is that gonna make you feel like, oh, hang on a second, we should have gone lower down. So, what you want to avoid is getting into a, oh, they've agreed to one drop, now we want to drop it again. You don't want to do that. that that's utterly soul-crushing and destroying for uh, the seller and is more likely to lead to the deal falling through and you don't want that, right? You've actually got to say, what is your real price? You don't want to get into haggling ups and downs and haggling. I just don't think that's a good idea, although the sellers will often try to do that. They'll try and haggle and meet you halfway or whatever. You want to work out what is the new price that you are going to stick to, okay? And don't mess them around with it. Work out what that new price is. For example, when I renegotiated, it was a, uh, the price had been agreed at 500,000 and I renegotiated at 470. And I didn't muck about. And it was actually a, a flat that was being sold through Foxons in London. Um, and Foxons, to their credit, negotiated extremely hard. They were very, very aggressive about saying, no, they're not going to accept a reduction. Uh, if, they don't, if you don't pay the price, they're going to sell it to someone else. And I was able to say, fine, if you've got another buyer at higher than I'm now offering, then, then you'll sell it to them. Otherwise, you're going to sell it at the new price. And they did. Um, but the point was, my new revised offer on behalf of my friend was firm. And it was serious. It wasn't just testing the water. That's just mucking people around, wasting their time. And you mustn't do that. So be confident on what your new figure is. Don't ask yourself, what are they going to agree to? That shouldn't matter. You should be working out what is the price you're comfortable with. And stick to that and go, you know, if a house life prices are falling, this is the price we're prepared to pay because, you know, hypothetically, let's say house prices are going to fall 20% from the price you've agreed. You might say, we're going to take 10% off because we're happy to accept a further 10% fall if they do fall 20%, okay? That might be your thinking. But pick your figure and stick to it. 
it should be what you think is a fair figure given the current market conditions, all right? I cannot advise you on how much that is, even in, either in percentage terms or in actual terms, because I don't know the property, how much you've agreed it, when you agreed it, what your mortgage value is. So I cannot advise you on that, okay? Um, I can only advise you on the principles and you've got to figure out the numbers yourself. By all means, send me a question with your private details and a private message if you want, um, if it helps you to, 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 to come to a decision, okay? So when you've worked out what your new price is, you've got to say to yourself, this is the price that if they accept it, we will proceed, right? So that you don't end up going, oh, actually, I'm going to drop it again. You, number one, is it a price you're definitely going to proceed at if they accept it? Um, number two, you've got to be confident that if they come and try and meet you halfway, you're going to say, no, I don't want to meet you halfway. This is my new price. Because if your new price and the, the, the counter offer they make are different, then that counter off is still going to be higher than the price you thought was fair, which you, sh which you shouldn't pay. My advice is never pay more than the price that you believe is the fair price. If you're buying a home, then, then it's not about haggling and niggling and getting a few extra quid here or there. It's what you think is the fair price given all your considerations. All right. Now, what will often happen is that a seller or a seller's agent will come back and say, they'll always go suck through their teeth and they'll always say, oh dear me, no, you can't do that. And you know that's their standard job. And they wouldn't be doing their job if they didn't do that, right? Um, and once they've done that, they'll say, okay, I've spoken to the seller and the seller has agreed that you know, they'll meet you halfway or whatever, but they want you to proceed immediately. And I think it's important that you're able to say, if your new offer is accepted, then you are happy to make sure that there are no further delays and you can proceed to exchange as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's what should accompany your new revised offer. Okay, this is my new revised offer, but if they're prepared to accept it, we can proceed immediately, as fast as possible. Okay, make sure that that is what you say with your offer. Now, if you're a seller listening to this and going, Charlie, what are you doing? Why are you telling people this? You're going you're gonna to make our sale fall through. And I, I, I've got friends in this position. I've got close friends and family who've currently got sales agreed and they're praying that people aren't going to renegotiate. They're saying to me, Charlie, please shut up. Stop telling people to renegotiate. But my, my position is always that there is a fair price given all the considerations, okay? So if you are a seller and your buyer is trying to renegotiate, then you've also got a decision to make, which is what... It, and, and my advice is... Have this conversation with yourself before a, a buyer comes to renegotiate with you if you're a seller. Work out what your lowest price you're prepared to go to is. And if their new offer is above that, then just say to them, well, are you prepared to exchange more quickly, move it, move it along faster? If so, then I'll accept your revised offer. Um, but if not, think through to yourself, think through what are you gonna do if they come with an offer that's too low? Are you gonna take your property off the market completely? Um, and just decide not to move because that's one option um, or are you going to accept their offer because what you must try and avoid if you're a seller is what often happens which is oh well if you're not going to pay we're going to get back on the market and wait for someone who will pay I think that ship has sailed as I record this in September 2022 I think that ship and you might have a very desirable property in a very desirable location there might still be a very strong market where you are okay there are always exceptions to this and you might might well say no I'm going to sell it to someone else for a higher price but um, if you are in the mainstream market um, then I think if the seller if the buyer tries to renegotiate with you you should be open to renegotiating if it's reasonable and again your decision on whether or not you accept the new lower price or not should be based on your reasons for moving or selling um, I think that's it um, if if this video, uh, uh, results in more questions than answers then please give me your questions either in the comments below the video or privately i'm on twitter at it's moving underscore charlie on twitter or you can private message me on instagram moving over charlie or facebook moving over charlie uh, and i hope this is a helpful video um, i look forward to your feedback and best of luck because this is it's scary stuff whichever side you're on this is scary stuff these are scary times um, but Everyone, all the best. Thank you for watching. Uh, welcome if you're, if you're new to the channel. And um, 
if you've got questions for me, please do check the videos because a lot of the videos I've done have already answered a lot of the new questions I'm getting from new followers. So just have a quick check on my channel page whether or not any of the recent videos that I've done may answer your question. But if not, please send me your questions. Thank you guys, all the best. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.